This is the Hidden Killers podcast with Tony Bruski. Featuring former FBI special agent and chief of the counterintelligence behavioral analysis program, Robin Dreek. The case against Brian Koberger, it is moving to Boise, Idaho. It's uh, moving out of Moscow. The uh, Supreme Court of Idaho ruled on that. And with that also comes a new judge. Judge Steve Hitler will be taking over the case from Judge John Judge. And the only reason I'm happy about that is the fact it's, it's confusing to say Judge John Judge. It's just gets confusing <laughs> quite often on the air. Right. Joining me to discuss Robin Drake, retired FBI special agent, chief of the counterintelligence behavioral analysis program. We've been covering this case now for almost two years. Um, when you heard the the news that uh, I guess uh, the the payoff has has occurred for the attorneys for Brian Koberger trying to do uh, the movement of this to another county, um, what was your thoughts? Um, just, just like you just said, you know the payoff for the defense attorney. Mm -hmm. I don't like when defense wins, mm -hmm. but. I understand why defense wins because I really don't want this to go through a lengthy appeal process, which she's going to do. I mean, it, she is an amazing defense attorney. Mm -hmm. I think she's doing a, a great job of defending him, which I think from what we see from the data points we have, it's a really high indefensible thing. Yeah. It, I mean, the, the, the data is just not standing in his favor in any sense of the word, but sh her job is to sow seeds of doubt. And as well as to low, sow the seeds of potential appeals. Mm -hmm. And so that's why this getting removed from that jurisdiction and having a new jury pool, I like it because it lessens the impact of potential um, issues with that aspect of the trial anyway. It's a hard one to weigh because they got to think about the families and everybody that's going to be impacted by the actual trial itself of wanting to be there. Um, and we're talking moving it like, 250, 300 miles away uh, to Boise. Wade, on the other hand, of if it is held in Moscow and he's convicted, there's a good chance he could get a retrial based on all the arguments of jury bias, which, you know, we're already talking summer of next year for this trial, if it's if it actually happens, um, which I'm going to guess may still go back further. Um, and then enduring this for God knows how long. I mean, we've seen trials where, you know, 10, 12, 15 years out, they finally get to a verdict. And that, the emotional toll that takes, beyond what these parents have already been through, has uh, got to be hell. Yeah, and I think this is going to be a lengthy trial um, because I think she is going to do, meaning the defense attorney for Koberger is going to do a really good job of dragging this out because her number one job is to save his life by sowing seeds of beyond reasonable doubt. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's what she's going to do a good job. So it's going to get really lengthy, really drawn out. But like you said, though, this is always such a challenging situation in these cases where the to, to move it out of the Moscow area so that you don't hopefully have jury tainting so there is a fair trial and also so that you can avoid appeal processes for that um, potential mistrial or whatever because of that local um, jury pool. At the same time, though, I always are thinking mostly of the victims in this case, just like you highlighted. This is a long way away from home, and the entire process of this is, is justice for the murdered girls but the, really what matters most right now is justice for the families. Mm -hmm. What do they need to allow them to feel whole and being there and being present without even any more tr you know, turb turbulence in their life just to get there is uh, that's a rough one. It's a very it's a very challenging. I, I, I really hope and, and I know um, the, the what, at least what, the parents have been very vocal on this. I really hope that when everyone agreed on this and and came to came to an agreement on this, I should say, is that they were their consideration was put into account that someone listened to them on this. One would certainly hope so um, that 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 was taken into consideration. It, it's an interesting way that the whole thing came about because it started with Ann Taylor uh, sending out those those phone surveys, um, right? Without asking the judge, just started doing it. And then kind of got scolded by the judge and then basically asked for forgiveness later. And then the judge sort of thought, well, maybe this will tell us something. And it clearly did. Uh, it, it's told us, I think, what anybody would have guessed, that there would be a bias. Um, I, I'm wondering what the bias would be in Boise. I'm going to guess it would be less just because it is further away. And 
people aren't so invested in it as a smaller community uh, would be. But when we're talking about um, the victims, the families uh, of all of this, I think only they can truly answer that question of what's going to what's going to, to put closure. I, I mean, I don't think they're ever going to, no one is ever going to be whole again when you lose a child. Um, but I think it, it's something a lot of, you know, we're out here advocating this way, that way, and we think it should be this way or that way, but it's really ultimately up to them. The The parents of, of Ethan have, have kind of moved move forward they planted their tulip garden and um and they're they're those are the ones who are not very vocal of all this they just kind of want to move forward with their life and just let this be what it's going to be um but yeah you have the gonzalves and other families uh who you know have been very very vocal uh on on all of this and it's not easy just to pick up and and be gone for months on end uh for a trial but I'm, i'm sure they'll have some consideration to do that when the time actually comes I'm wondering how this is going to change the trial or or anything about the trial as we lead up to it, because most trials are decided. In this case, we're talking about the case against Brian Koberger, uh, not necessarily decided, but a lot of the arguments, what's going to get into the court is decided way before the trial actually begins, which we still have several months to do. And with a new judge and everything, we could see uh, even more. I, what I'm wondering is how long... Ann Taylor's going to keep pushing delays on this. Is it going to be, what if she's like shooting for a bar here, like take death off the table, then we'll have the trial. And once that may be taken off the table, then maybe we'll see less push for delays and such of that nature. Every delay helps Koberger. Yeah. Distance between the site of the murders helps Koberger. Mm -hmm. Everything that's happening. And that's why I get it. But I, I, and you and I are talking about this before the show started, you know, when you read books from some of the great profilers out there, um, like John Douglas, his book Obsession talks about this, and even Gavin De Becker, his book The Gift of Fear, which goes into really the dark, horrible minds of, of these horrendous people, our justice system sometimes gets out of balance where they're given too much to the to the perpetrator of the crime where, sure. where they become the person that is catered to, too too much. And this, this is the fear I have in this one, because think about this uh, again. I, I love doing these thought experiments because this is what, where deep empathy comes in because when you can get inside the mind of the people that are going to be on the jury, because that really what that's what comes down to this is the mind of the parents because they're who ma- matter, but really the mind of the jury is going to be making a decision on this. The more time space you have from an event, the less emotions are involved, the more Mm. pragmatic it is. And so then it's going to come, if it's more pragmatic, it's just going to come down to data and details. And when you have Ann Taylor, the defense is going to be arguing those data and details, that it's not an exact science, that that the cell phone pings were in the area, but not exactly there. So she's sowing seeds of doubt Mm -hmm. because it's not less emotional because there's time space between the actual event and this happens. The other thing that I don't like about the spacing on this is I thought they did a great job on the Alec Murda case where they brought the jury to where his wife and son were murdered. Yeah, They walked the ground Be, and the house no longer exists in, in Moscow, but now we have space from people that don't even live in that town. Mm-hmm. The emotional connection is even further apart. Yeah. So even, it, and I get why, because that's why jury pools would be tainted because you're so local, because you can taste it, touch it, feel it because you lived right next to that house or you passed that house. And so you can really imagine the horrendous thing that happened inside that house. But when you bring it out so far away, 250 miles, you have that emotional disconnect. So you have an emotional disconnect, a cognitive disconnect because you have time and now space that it's definitely not benefiting the prosecution. All right, true crime addicts, let's cut the crap. You're knee deep in the gory details of your favorite podcast when suddenly a commercial hits like a bad meal. Seriously? You deserve better. Upgrade to True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts, where you can binge without those annoying ads. Plus, get extended interviews that go deeper into the darkness and early access to episodes so you can be the first to know. It's like trading up from fast food to fine dining, but with more blood. So, go ahead. Search for True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts. Subscribe and feast on the good stuff.